Previously on Hell's Rich. Armageddon. I will die on this world. Grimaldus. Let that be the last blow you receive, unanswered. And now we are going further into the abyss. Oh, I don't know why I'll tell up with using that voice, but. I'm uh, trying to strain a bit on the voice acting stuff. But what is up guys, Jack here with another video. So we are continuing the Hell's Reach series and I've been told that there is so much hype about this, especially towards episode 7. So I am going to make my way onto it. I've learned that Richard Boyland, who actually got to work on this with his wife, which is magnificent what a lucky guy actually got hired or is working alongside with uh, games workshop now so it's a good thing that he actually got some benefits of his fan work so that's pretty amazing also the whole thing of uh, Grimaldus getting hit in the face was an actual ritual so that's uh, as a nice thing like a, a brotherhood of a thing to have uh, pretty exciting, but let's not tarry because I've been told that I need to make my way to episode 7 because this is something that makes actual grown men cry. So without further ado, let's jump into part 3 of Hell's Rich. Grim darkness of fear. There is only war. quite strange I've recently come to learn how much like the, the, the trillions of people of inhabitants that humanity alone make up in the universe at this time and um, it's crazy Soldiers are just going there like cannon fodder. Ooh! Now that's one valiant soldier. Just standing in the middle of everything, fearless. Oh! <laughs> All right, fifty seven years later. Oh, sure, right. That was in the past. Awaiting the actual badasses. It's just like when a regular soldier is facing somebody in the power arm and fall out. It's like, dude. Are you Kirov? I am. We are the Emperor's Knights. Uh, we are the warriors of the Eternal Crusade and the sons of Robo Dawn. I am Helbrecht, High Marshal of the Black Templars. And I With peace like everybody as an equal. Emperor's champion. <laughs> Grimaldus, the Clusiarch. We come to offer you our blades, our service, and the lives of over 900 warriors in the defense of your world. Kurov stood in silence. 900 Astartes. Entire star systems were conquered with a fraction of that. I am glad to hear it. 
And welcome to Armageddon. Oh, those are those bloody orbs again. Oh, it's he just a book. Will not survive the first week. He lost his arm. The man speaking is ancient, and he looks every hour of his age. Both piety and hate echo in his every word. His name is Sebastian Yarrick. Even we Astartes must respect that name. Ooh. What is coming in system now? Far I've heard of what has laid this guy through some of the. Uh, the other hives must be reinforced a thousand times over. Law videos. Hades will burn. At our best estimations, battle fleet Armageddon, the orbital defenses, and the Astartes fleets remaining in the void will be able to deny the enemy landing for nine days. These are our best estimates. And the last? Four days. Once the orbital war is lost, be it four days or nine, our fleets will break from the planet in a fighting withdrawal. From then on, Armageddon will be defenseless beyond what is already entrenched upon the surface. The orcs will be free to land whatever and wherever they wish. Those were the sons of Horus. Given his seniority and the expertise of his chapter, High Marshal Helbrecht of the Black Templars will take overall command of the Astartes fleets. We are to remain in orbit. We are the obvious choice to command the Astartes elements in the orbital battles. I was wrong. I will not die in futility on this world. <laughs> We can slaughter the greenskin tyrant before he even sets foot on the world below us. I have already spoken with the other marshals, my brother. Right. We must leave a contingent on the surface to defend one of the hive cities that yet remains ungarrisoned by Astartes. That was a quick Uno day. Duty, my leash. And yet, a commander must remain. Yes, one. No. Don't do this. It is already done. No, this is not the time. The decision is made, Grimaldus. I know you as I knew Mordred. You will not refuse this honor. I would burst the great enemy's black heart in my hand and cast his blasphemous flagship to the surface of Armageddon, wreathed in holy fire. Do not leave me here, Helbrecht. Do not deny me this glory. You will not refuse this honor. Wait, brother. It's actually nice to see. That's one of the many things that some of us, tend, at least some of us new people who get into it, tend to forget is that our starting soldiers, although they. More or less could be compared to the clones. Uh, they are clones of the Emperor in some sort. Grown lab lab rats. Or sometimes just evolved humans. Um, they have personal issues. They all want something out of this. Except for just dying for the Emperor, of course. Their destination was called, with bleakness so typical of this world, Hell's Reach. This is Hell's Reach. Oh. We cannot be the only Astartes strength sent to this city. We will not be alone. The so Garnet Hell's Reach was ground zero for the second humans. war of Armageddon. The Legio Invigilata has landed to the east of the city. Titans, my brother. I don't see you sneering at that. <laughs> yeah. The Krusiak. How can we defend all this? With blade and bolter. With faith and fire. Yeah. I 
think the Loot 9 recently made a video about um, like the hierarchy of the people there. Oh, this is flashback again then. Sebastian Yarek. Strong mofo. <laughs> Pretty interesting about the character of Sebastian Herrick. Uh, Yarrick, sorry. Um, quite a badass there. An older gentleman who seems to, yeah, just have been old the entire time. I know that they age very slowly. Um, some of them might even live forever if they do not die in battle, which is more or less like the greatest honor. Yet, um, yeah, I mean, he hasn't changed into 50, what is he, 56 or 57 years post the um, Second War of Armageddon. So, psh, strong, strong stuff there. But let's keep on going to the second part. Oh, part four. Also, it's kind of crazy how our start is. May or may not look down on humans. I mean, they are evolved. Oh. Oh! Oh, what the? By the Emperor, what is this atrocity? Oh, they're just passing by like there's nothing. I mean, they've seen some crazy stuff out there. Yikes! Oh, don't tell me he's going to jump. Oh. I mean, if I were in a position like that, I'd probably try to kill myself. This is just... I am Grimaldus, Reclusiarch of the Hell's Reach Crusade. I am Colonel Saren of the 101st Steel Legion and overall commander of the Imperial Guard forces defending the Hive. One strong elevator. Muted clicks could be heard every few seconds from the helms of the knights standing closest to him. Saren knew full well they were speaking with each other over a shared vox channel. He didn't like it. Not at all. Who are these others? I would meet every commander of this hive. If they are present. They are present, so. Reclusiarch. Not... So, <laughs> as you wish, Reclusiarch. Uh, this is Syria Tyre. Respect to my authority. <laughs> Commissar Falkov of my command staff. This is Major Mordecai Riken, second officer of the 101st and Mordecai. ex of the city defense. Uh, Commander Corton Barasath of the Imperial 5082nd Naval. A pleasure to serve with the Black Templars again. You have served with the Knights of Dawn before. 
I have personally, nine years ago on Dathax, and the 5082s have on no fewer than four separate occasions. Sixteen of our fighters are marked with a heraldic cross, with permission given by Marshal Tarasan on the Dathax Crusade. I am honored, Tarasan. The most honorable moderati primus valiant Carsomir of the Legio Invigilata, crewman of the blessed engine Storm Herald. Moderati, do you speak with the voice of your legion? A full battle. I am the voice of Princeps Majoris Zaha Mansion, and the rest of Invigilata is committed to other engagements. Fortune favors us that you still remain. We have much to discuss. Indeed we do. This way, if you please. The hours pass in a blur of statistical outlays, charts, hololithic projections, and graphs. The food supplies for the entire city. Ration projections, sustainable food ration planning, unsustainable food ration planning, with appended lists of estimated sacrificial casualties. Estimates of disease once the city is shelled, and civilian casualties are too heavy to be dealt with efficiently. Types of disease, symptoms, yeah, of course. risk of contagion, biological computers, genes, because the AI were unauthorized in the 41st millennium. Legends, their officers, their the 40th, live sorry. fire training accuracy records, their citations, their shames, their moments of greatest glory and ignominy in a host of distant worlds. The guard figures alone take two days to file through. And this, they say, is merely the overview. Coastal defenses, walls and turrets and anti-air towers, and trade requirements and I saw in Boyden's site that... Petitions arguing over docking rights and warehouses appropriated as barracks for soldiers and complaints... There's an audiobook of dock this. Officers and, oh, and I endure this for nine days. <laughs> nine. Days. <laughs> I am the hum of the Emperor. I'm not here to sit down for your bureaucracy. I want to remove the threat from the Materium. They need to die. And there they are. I see. That was the thing. It is straight up draining their lives. Oh. No. People of High Hell's Reach. Do not be Oh. I was seeing a death space scenario right now. are in lockdown without the proper command codes. Do you have the codes, my lord? Oh. I am being a fool. My fury 
is blinding me to my sworn duty. I have the codes, but this is not an emergency. Simply send the following message to their incoming logs with no need for a reply. Fight well, brothers. I see. He's just Simple. trying to be nice. My thanks. Forgive me a moment, Skoon. We have a war to play. Until their dying nights, the warriors of the Hell's Reach Crusade pour their lamentations and rage with all the dignity that could be expected of them. But it was no easy feat. No easy feat. As they were just observing the their brothers being slaughtered. Frightened souls, while above the stained clouds, hundreds upon hundreds of their battle brothers were carving their glory from the steel and flesh of an ancient and hated foe. The Black Templars across the city look sky. Wow! Their helms' red eye lenses could pierce the wretched clouds and see the holy war above. I could see these the being made the in like a Sin City like scenario. You know, like a black and white film. Where like you will see like blood rain coming down and lightning piercing the clouds. Oh, this is good. Right. Okay, guys. Oh, crazy. What an insane turn of events. <laughs> I like how in part three, uh, you know, from, from the get-go there, he, he in part one he was like, I would die on this world. He knew from a get go that yeah, you know, this is our job as our starters. We go in there, we we are we are the clean up man with the Emperor Sledgehammer. We go in and do what has to be done. But you know, with all the training and all the glory that I've amassed so far in dealing with well terrible threats without a doubt, but when it comes to like higher scale of wars, uh the probability of us dying, of me dying, is really high. And <laughs> he knew just from the get-go that, yeah, I would give my life for the Emperor and that is it. I mean, to some extent, I'm, trying, I'm starting to think that humanity as a whole, Astartes especially, are just like wrestling fans. Did you hear what this motherfucker's doing? Yeah, I heard. I know, it's a weird analogy, but think about this, like, they are wrestling fans and the only, and like, the Emperor is like Ric Flair. Like, as soon as they mention his name, they go like, woo! <laughs> and, I mean, they don't have to rehearse that. It's just like ingrained in them. <laughs> it's just a bunch of bros. Well, except for the, the only thing that would come to that analogy is that well, the threat is actually real and when it, when it hurts, it hurts bad. But yeah, <laughs> oh, this is cool. Man, I just love that animation right there. Past, yeah, when he gets his composure back again, and then as he stands there with his brothers and oh, just observing the sky of the slaughter that's going on above this, uh, above the clouds. Whew, man. And I love the visualization that they made here because recently I watched a video uh, by Loot9 kind of describing how the population, or at least uh, the, the, the trade methods in the Imperium, as he was trying to kind of correlate that to what was going on in, um, like, a, what was it? Like, 30 of, or 12th century, something like that. Because this, this, are more or less the, the way that people are trading because it's not so much about the value of the currency itself but what you actually have to offer like the value of your merchandise whether it is people or actual goods so to that point he also mentioned like the, just the sheer vastness of humanity we know from the dark age they spread out to the rest of the of the universe and a lot of colonies got kind of uh, cut off from Earth and, yeah, well, the center of what was uh, the, the Imperium itself. 
So you have like trillions of individuals living there in planets and cities have billions of people. So just seeing that visualization there of people just crossing the street. Yes, they are not like in, in hordes of people still like tumbling into each other. Because by the way, this is Hell's Reach. This is, has been a war torn area. Uh, so it's not as fortified as uh, let's say the, 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 the Imperium's main hold. But I love that they visualize how many people there were there. And those biological weapons, because again, hoop hoop for those few who commented there that they still uh, appreciate um, the, the colonies on Mars, aka the, the, uh, the, the machine guard. <laughs> but um, I loved that they also showed the biological things because, yeah, the Imperium seemed to have, uh, for more or less good reasons, of their own hubris. Uh, they are fearful of AIs um, that they might turn against them, so they're creating creating biological robots and disgusting, but yet still makes sense that they will feature it here. But quite appreciated. But thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Uh, I'm sure that you love this as much as I am right now, and uh, yeah, stick around for some upcoming parts. And also, if you're new to the channel, because I know that a good Unfortunately, close to 80% of you who watched the previous RTC videos um, and the Hell's Reach one are not subscribed to the channel. So it will help quite a lot if you stuck around and yeah, give the video at least a like if you liked it. It lets me know that you like this type of content and I keep doing more. So thanks a lot for watching and have a good one. See you next time.